The Pixar Cinematic Universe in timeline order explained through the Pixar Theory. Here we go. But before we continue, the Pixar Theory was created by John Negroni. It is just a theory, none of it is fact yet. So take this as you will. First, we start with the good dinosaur. It's not really that relevant to the theory, but next we have Brave. The important thing to know about Brave within the Pixar Theory is the magic of the wisps in the movie. You know, the magic that turns Merida's mom into a bear. That magic goes beyond the movie Brave. It actually leads into our next movie, which is The Incredibles. It takes place in the 1950s and the 1960s. For this theory, the supers got their powers from the same wisps that we see in Brave. Brave comes into play later on in the Pixar theory as well, so stay tuned. Now, in The Incredibles, we meet Syndrome. He basically gives himself powers with his own tech, using something called Zero Point Energy. We'll get back to that. Next on the timeline, obviously, we have The Incredibles 2. Next, we have Luca, which also takes place somewhere in the 1950s, 1960s. To me, it's unclear, so I'm just going to put it after The Incredibles movies. This movie, though, in general, doesn't really do much for the Pixar theory, just that, you know, mystical things can happen in this universe. Next, we have Lightyear, a movie within the Pixar universe that Andy watches. Now ready to head into the modern era of Pixar, so be sure to tag a Pixar friend, hit that follow button, and stay tuned for part two, because it's about to get real interesting. Now, we left off in the 1990s with Toy Story, but we need to go back just a little bit further. So if y'all remember, we talked about Syndrome and his little wristband here. Said wristband was powered by zero point energy. With the idea of using energy to create things in this universe, it's not unreasonable to believe that companies like, by and large, who pop up throughout the Pixar universe can use that energy to harvest human emotion. And through that human emotion, toys come to life. A big theme throughout the Pixar movies is that human emotion, love, whatever, is incredibly powerful. And Toy Story is the beginning of proving that theory. The toy's whole existence is to make their person happy, to bring them joy. Because deep down they know their joy is how they thrive. And in the next movie in the Pixar timeline, Toy Story 2, we begin to understand just how dangerous it is for these toys to be isolated. When they're away from the powerful, positive human emotion, they start forming resentments. Just like Jessie resented her owner. Next on our timeline is Turning Red. Now, a lot of you guys like to point out to me that this movie came out in 2022. I know! But for the love of everything, this movie is based, meaning it takes place in 2002. Okay? As for the Pixar theory, this movie does really nothing for the Pixar theory. But it also doesn't do anything against it, so it just exists. Next, we have Finding Nemo. Now, originally, as part of the Pixar theory, they explain how Dory is forgetful because she was once experimented on by people. I don't necessarily like that theory. But I do like the idea of going back to zero-point energy, mixing in with the idea of pollution, that fish are able to become more aware and develop human characteristics just like toys can. Which is why they have functional societies. They've literally built a freeway system in the ocean! So I like that explanation. I think it makes a lot more sense than Dory being experimented on. And importantly, you see that fish do have a resentment towards people. So it's slowly beginning. Which, by the way, next you have Finding Dory. I also think this movie debunks the idea that Dory was experimented on. So, good for Finding Dory. things back up with Ratatouille. First of all, Ratatouille does take place in the 2000s. Here's why. In the scene where we see Gusteau's will, it's dated June 2000, I believe, 4. But definitely a 2. So the movie has to take place a few years after 2004. Now, Ratatouille is important because it's showing how intelligent animals are becoming. I mean, Remy literally becomes one of the best chefs in the world just by being around humans and learning from them. And it also kind of proves that human energy, human emotion is the most powerful thing in this universe like we've talked about in the past. But we also see in this movie how Remy's rat clan hates humans. Pixar once again displaying animal resentment towards people. And again, Toy Story 3 kind of goes along in those themes. It's showing how objects also have resentment towards people. I mean, lots of the bear hates humans. At this point, the world is kind of sick of people, and I don't know if I blame them. <laughs> also, have you ever caught the Easter egg about how Andy literally has a postcard from Carl and Ellie? Crazy. Now, next we have Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4 is incredibly important for the Pixar theory, regardless about how you feel about this movie. Because a major plot point, 4K coming to life, literally proves something massive in the Pixar theory. Human emotions being the most powerful thing in the universe. Bonnie needed a friend. The toys like we talked about come to life 
because of how much people love them. They feed off it. And when Bonnie needed a friend most, Forky came alive! Continuing the theory with Up. Now Up demonstrates that humans are starting to become more aware about the intelligence of animals. As well as the evolution of artificial intelligence, AI, which is demonstrated with Charles Muntz's dog, Army. This movie is more animals resenting people. As well as Up also has an underlining theme of big corporations like, by and large, damaging the environment. Now Inside Out is next on the timeline. And right after Inside Out is Coco. Both movies contribute to the Pixar theory in the same way. We've been talking about human energy being the most powerful thing in the Pixar Cinematic Universe. Well, both Inside Out and Coco prove that the source of that power comes from human emotions. Inside Out shows emotions as being a dominant factor in human actions, as well as different imaginations contributing to the power of energy humans give off. While Coco shows the power of memory and survival and what happens to energy after we pass. It also justifies Bing Bong's death in Inside Out because he's alive until Riley forgets him. Now next in the Pixar timeline is Soul. And Soul has a similar explanation as Coco, except here the afterlife process looks different. So the explanation here is pretty simple. The afterlife is presented in a way that you can comprehend it. The different cultures can have different looks. How do we get from Soul to Cars? How can this be the same universe? Now, according to the Pixar theory, we've been talking a lot about how there's been a lot of resentment between animals and people. So somewhere between Soul and Cars, a war breaks out between animals who are incredibly intelligent and humans who win the war with the help of machines. But that tips the balance of how things run on Earth. So machines and by and large gather the humans and they send them off into space with the ship called the Axiom, which will come back into play later. I know that sounds ridiculous. How do we know it's true? Well, in Cars 2, they travel all over the world, confirming that this is still the Earth we know and love. There's just no humans anywhere. The movie also reveals that they are experiencing a gas shortage. And all in all, Corporation was trying to use green energy to turn cars away from other alternative energy sources. Because clean fuel would have swiftly wiped out all the cars. Anyway, all in all was run by, by and large. At the end of the day, machines can't survive without people. Cars 3 mentions a crab, showing that other life can live on Earth besides machines as well during this time. Next we have Wally, which earlier I mentioned Axiom comes back into play with this movie because that's the name of the ship all the people went off to space in. Now this movie finally exposes by and large as kind of the bad guy of the Pixar universe. And also important at the end of the movie, people return to Earth, finally. More than that, machines realize humans depend on them, giving them purpose. And also, Two significant things from Wally. The two things that live on Earth that are not machines, a plant and a cockroach. Now, this is where the theory gets absolutely insane. 100 year time jump, people are trying to repopulate the Earth. At the end of Wally, you see that plant in the boot become a tree in the credit scenes. That tree is where the bugs in Bugs Life live. And the genetic makeup of insects has evolved, making them far more advanced. And as of right now, insects are the dominant species on Earth. Now the bug era can only last so long. Now human emotion once again is the most powerful thing on the planet. And according to the Pixar theory, Onward displays how humans use that emotion to harness magic, turning them into elves, monsters, etc. But that power eventually wears off. And all that are left are monsters. We finally made it to Monsters, Inc. The main thing about this movie is it also confirms how powerful human emotion is. I mean, that's how literally they survive. The big thing is what possibly happens after Monsters, Inc. with Boo. Because Boo grows up being obsessed with returning back to the monster world. She invents time travel using doors and discovers the source of magic. Making her, yes, the witch from Brave, as she's never reunited with Sully. But Sully is always on her mind. So here's how I believe Elemental fits into the Pixar theory. And a lot of it has to do with what we've talked about within the Pixar theory about human emotion is the most powerful thing in the universe. It's constantly displayed throughout the Pixar timeline. The machine era failed without humans when humans came back and eventually used the magic like the ones we see from Brave and human emotion to kind of morph into elves, mystical creatures like we see in Onward and then eventually evolving from there into Monsters, aka, you know, the Monsters Inc. universe. Which, by the way, if you're confused at this point, go check out the video this comment is from, watch the whole Pixar theory, save this video, and come back. You'll be less confused. 
even though people have kind of morphed into monsters over hundreds and hundreds of years, the aspect of human energy being the most powerful thing is still incredibly relevant, especially since the monster universe depends on human energy, which is why they go back in time through doors to get that energy. And we learn in this movie how laughter is incredibly powerful, and it's changed everything from there. What if laughter kind of overloads everything? And laughter in itself is so much energy, human love is so much energy, it overloads the monster city, converting everything and morphing everything into the elements of the universe. Fire, water, earth, air, which gives us the elemental world, and also why they have human characteristics and human culture. So that's how I see elemental fitting into the Pixar theory. Do you think it makes sense?